case to come before the court this morning is in re NF and NT. Mr. Eckerwell, you'll have 15 minutes in which to present your argument. Um, the uh, opposing side or the appellant, excuse me, the appellee in this case did not file a brief. You know not to use the name of any children. May it please the court, Neil Agro on behalf of the legal custodians. Your Honor, uh, back in 2012, Summit County Children's Services filed a complaint alleging abuse, offense, and neglect of these two children. It was substantiated, and mom, who was on a number of drug issues, could not resume custody. Eventually, my clients, the legal custodians, obtained legal custody of both these children. In 2018, a number of years later, mom files a motion to modify seeking a modification of custody and a motion to modify visitation. Uh, during the course of the proceeding, I sent mother uh, a request for admissions. Uh, mom failed to respond. I filed a notice with the court saying the time limit to respond to my admissions has lapsed. By operation of law, these requests for admissions are now being admitted. Mom never responded to that. We had a hearing before the magistrate at juvenile court. I again reiterated, Your Honor, these admissions that have been admitted by mother, and basically I would want judgment at this time. The trial court denied basically judgment on pleadings, but did say, I am accepting that these admissions are being admitted at this point. Okay, can we back up just a little bit when you initially said mom failed to respond? Correct. When I hear that, I think there's absolutely no addressing of a request for admissions whatsoever. But then when I read the, the decision, that's not quite the case. So well, it wasn't exactly a total failure to respond. Well, Your Honor, there was a pleading. I don't know who this, and I told the court, I don't know what this pleading is. It's not from mother. It's not signed by mother. There's no certificate of service from mother. I don't know what this is. It has my name on it. I sent it out. I filed it. And I answered whatever this was. And I told the court, I don't know what this is. I have nothing to do with it. I think it's a sham. I want it struck it from the record. And the court, the magistrate agreed. I'm not, I am going to find that your request for admissions have been deemed admitted. Okay. Um, after the conclusion of the evidence at the hearing, the court, the magistrate denied mother uh, mo a motion to modify legal custody. However, granted her a motion to modify visitation and granted her a standard order of visitation, even though she didn't request a standard order of visitation and even though she didn't testify to that's what she wanted. I have filed objections, and the judge, for the first time, says, sua sponte, even though it was never briefed or argued, that uh, I'm going to consider this unsigned pleading that was dated by Mr. Agarwal as being mom's answer to admissions, and based upon that, it would be prejudicial for me not to say that she denied the admissions. And under my first assignment of error, I, I, I list a number of reasons why that is an error. First of all, when the magistrate made a ruling that uh, I'm going to deem the request for admissions admitted, mom never objected. She never said I objected that. She never filed objections to the magistrate's ruling raising that. It was never an issue during the proceeding before the magistrate nor was it any proceeding before the judge. The judge did it sua sponte, and I had no chance to respond to it. Now, I would note just yesterday, Your Honor, and I, I filed a supplemental uh, uh, this morning, just yesterday, in Joseph versus Joseph, it came out of the Ninth District. It, this court, it was a domestic case where the court, after objections, modified the consent decree between a married couple, and on objection, one of the parties said, well, I didn't know the court was going to do that. And this court agreed. It says neither wife's motion or her objections to magistrate's decision or the decision itself placed these issues before the trial court. And basically they said uh, she was not guaranteed uh, fundamental guarantees of due process or notice of an opportunity to be heard reversed. And that just came out yesterday. Same thing here. If the judge was going to deem that these admissions have been answered when nobody thought that was an issue, then I should have been given an opportunity to respond. Okay. But regardless, we're arguing the judge can't do that. She didn't respond. She didn't sign anything. And, and the 
I cited in my briefs ad nauseum that the statute requires when you file an answer to admissions, it shall be signed by the parties. Civil Rule 11 says all pleadings shall be signed and served. That wasn't done. And I'm saying during the hearing, I don't know what this is. This pleading has my name on it, my signature. I have nothing to do with this. Mom has never responded. And the court magistrate said, OK, we're going to go proceed for the hearing on the grounds that the admissions are deemed admitted. And what did Mom admit for purposes of this hearing? That there's been no change in circumstances for a modification of visitation, nor is it in the best interest of the children to modify visitation. And that was her conclusive proof of mother's side. So I'm saying when we do that, when she herself is admitting that there's been no change in circumstances or in the best interest, there's really nothing to litigate at that point, and that we should have been given judgment, even if not before hearing, definitely afterwards. Now, very interestingly, the magistrate says, I'm going to find that there's been a change in circumstances. What were the changes in circumstances the magistrate found? She doesn't, the magistrate doesn't specify. I have no idea. The only two changes of modification that the mother sought was that the legal custodian's uh, health is deteriorating and that there's been a breakdown in communication between the two parties. There was no evidence presented of either of those two grounds at the hearing in any way. When I objected to the judge saying there was no basis for a change in circumstances, the judge found three changes of circumstances, none of which were found by the magistrate or sought by mother in her motion to modify custody or visitation. She found, one, that the father had passed away. Two, that there was some sexual allegation between the legal custodian's son and, this, and one of the children. And, uh, and there's a third one I'm trying to remember. Um, but in either case, none of those grounds were raised on objections. None of them were raised by mother at trial. None of them, I had no ability to respond or have notice that the judge was going to find a change of circumstances based upon grounds that I had no idea of. So I'm saying, how can the judge find grounds that mom herself did not allege, nor present any evidence to? And two of the three grounds that the judge found came not from mother or mother's testimony, but came from the guardian ad litem as to her recommendation. And this court has held uh, numerous times that the guardian cannot present evidence, substantive evidence. And the quote is here on page 21. Although the report of a guardian ad litem may necessarily include information about what the other people told her, relying upon her report as establishing those things as fact is improper. So if the court is taking the guardian ad litem's testimony as substantive evidence to make a finding of a change in circumstances, I, I don't know how she could do that, because I'm not considering the guardian's testimony as substantive. I'm not challenging her how she learned that evidence, because it's hearsay, and she has a right to learn it as part of her, her recommendation. But the court can't say, because guardian Lightning said this, I'm going to take that as conclusive fact. And this court said, there's no authority for that. There's no statute. There's nothing that we are aware of. And in fact, the first sentence of that paragraph the role of the guardian ad is to assist the court in the determination of a child's best interest. Um, the court is unaware of any legal authority that permits the guardian ad litem to offer evidence of facts about which he had no first-hand knowledge. Okay. So I'm saying there's been no change of circumstances presented by the, by the mother in her petition, as she alleged. The magistrate did not find any, and the ones that the judge found were not issues either on objection or before the trial court, and I never had a chance to, to, to oppose whatever the magistrate found for her findings of fact, because she didn't list it. And then lastly, Your Honor, as to the actual, uh, that it wasn't the best interest for a mother to have a standard order. The Ohio Supreme Court has held that a party is limited to their prayer for relief. So, mom never requested a standard order. She just wanted a modification. Mom never testified at the modification hearing. She never said, this is what I want. None of her witnesses said, this is what mom should have. I had no ability to cross-examine mother about her extensive criminal history, her ongoing 
and present drug use that she still in the, had in the home with a, a newborn baby. Ajma had staff full, but once the magistrate says these admissions are deemed admitted, I, I was like, okay, we have our cases met. We don't have to present any evidence. We don't have to present any facts because the court itself, the magistrate herself is saying each and every objection where mom says is not in the best interest, there's been no circumstances, I can't take care of these children, it's not good for a modification to occur. And again, remember mom is stipulating to all of these as facts. Why would I need to spike the ball in the end zone by introducing additional evidence that just supports mom's own admissions? Well, if mom is saying, I don't think it's in the best interest to modify custody, uh, I, I don't know if you would take that as evidence of a, a factual basis or legal, but she's saying, I don't think it's in the best interest. So if mom herself is saying, there's no best interest for modification of custody or visitation, why would I, and that's been accepted by the magistrate, why would I need to introduce additional evidence to support that? The trial court says, it is prejudicial to mom if I didn't say this phantom pleading is mom's, I'm going to allow her to file an answer. But she didn't think of what would be the prejudice to the legal custodians when she made that ruling after the submission of all evidence. So the trial court is saying the magistrate made the evidentiary ruling. Evidence was presented based upon that. But on appeal or based on objections, I'm going to overturn that evidentiary ruling. And based upon that new ruling, mom wins. And we as the legal custodians are left hanging holding the bag, wondering, wait, what happened? We would have easily, I have witnesses lined up and ready to go. But again, why do I need to submit it once mom herself is stipulating and conceding her entire case? And I've cited case law after case law that says admissions are deemed conclusive, that they're self-enforcing. And if she object, if mom at any point thought I was wrong, when I filed a notice with the court saying she didn't answer, these are gonna be, we are considering them deemed admitted, Mom sat on her hands and said nothing. At the magistrate hearing, at the hearing for the magistrate, when I again argued these admissions are being deemed, mom again said nothing. So. But I thought the magistrate said that she would consider it as an admission. She, I mean, she, not as an admission, as, um, as a pleading and, and proceeding accordingly. No, no. What she said was, I am going to consider that the, these admissions have been deemed admitted. But she also said then after. No, that's not my understanding. No. Okay, well, we'll look at yeah, obviously. What's in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, mom, and I cite where the magistrate says they are deemed admitted. And that's all I know. But I she don't... can change her mind. Huh? She can change her mind if she did so prior to you presenting your evidence. Well, she, I don't think she can once the trial begins, because whether I present evidence or not, mom is presenting her evidence based upon the deemed admissions. She would have to, if she wants to change her mind, she would have to do that present before the presentation of the case begin, regardless of who started. So in conclusion, I don't think there's been any change in circumstances. There's been no, there's certainly not in the child's best, children's best interest, mm -hmm. and the admissions have been deemed admitted where mom has conceded her entire case. So I'm asking the court to reverse and find that uh, mom is not entitled to a standard order of visitation.